Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Liz Rutledge, Director of Wildlife Resources at the North Carolina Wildlife Federation. Thank you for attending tonight's webinar, which is part of the 15 webinar series, Learn to Deer Hunt. This series offers a dynamic lineup of presentations and materials curated by the New Hill Hunter Education and Mentoring Program, covering a wide variety of topics to guide new deer hunters from pre-season scouting to processing. The series is hosted and moderated by the North Carolina Wildlife Federation in conjunction with its Southwake Conservationist chapter. And so we'll go over just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we ask that you stay muted throughout the webinar until we have the question and answer session at the end. Uh, the webinar is being recorded for future use, so please turn off your camera if you do not want to be seen on the video recording. And we ask that you either Put any questions that you have in the chat box during the presentation and I will read those to the speaker during the Q&A session or you may raise your hand to be called on during the Q&A session. And to raise your hand, you just use the hand sign in the top right corner of your screen. All right, and let's take just a couple minutes to provide some background information on the North Carolina Wildlife Federation programming related to R3, which is retention, recruitment, and reactivation. So academics of field, um, NC, NC State has partnered with the Wildlife Federation along with Wildlife Resources Commission and Wake County Wildlife Club, along with other conservation groups to build upon current R3 programming and to introduce college students from non-traditional backgrounds to hunting and shooting sports. We also have Getting Started Outdoors, which is a partnership between the Wildlife Federation and the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission to provide an all-day educational workshop and one-on-one -on -one deer hunting mentoring opportunities for participants. For those interested in wildlife and conservation policy issues, the Wildlife Federation has the CAMO Coalition, which is the listserv to keep members up to date on policy, specifically geared toward hunters and anglers. Artemis is a program of the National Wildlife Federation that NCWF promotes to uplift women in sporting and conservation to provide small group hunting and mentoring opportunities for females. And the Federation is proud to host this webinar series in conjunction with the New Hill Education and Mentoring Program and additional partners who are contributing the educational content for the webinars we're able to bring to you. In addition, Federation volunteers Guy and Judy Gardner partner with the Wildlife Resources Commission to provide skills-based seminars consisting of Deer Hunting 101 and From Field to Freezer Deer Processing. Uh, these are open to the public and they are usually held in September. And then the Wildlife Federation also works directly with North Carolina Hunters for the Hungry, which is another nonprofit organization to facilitate the donation of hunter harvested deer to feed the hungry across the state. And so this seminar series was curated by the New Hill Education and Mentoring Program and facilitating partners listed on the slide. These webinars are for adults new to deer hunting and includes practical topics to explore the ins and outs of hunting to enhance your overall outdoor experience. Please see the New Hill Education and Mentoring Program Facebook page for more information on field opportunities. And so this evening, I'm happy to introduce the guest speaker, which is Pat O'Donnell, and he is from the New Hill Education and Mentoring Program. I'll provide a little background on our speaker and then I'll let Pat introduce the webinar topic for this evening. Pat O'Donnell has been a passionate sportsman, mentor, and wildlife educator in North Carolina for many years. An avid archer and trapper, Pat has actively sought every opportunity to engage others in the outdoors and hunting sports. Beyond common big and small game species and methods, Pat enjoys hunting alligator and bow fishing. He traps for both pelts and to support wildlife remediation efforts. As an active member of the North Carolina Bow Hunters Association, he's certified to support both depredation and urban deer management initiatives. Pat is also an accomplished dog trainer. As an active mentor serving the New Hill Hunter Education and Mentoring Program, Pat is credited with launching the hunting careers of dozens of new hunters. So we're extremely excited to have Pat with us here today, and I will turn it over to him to introduce tonight's webinar topic. 
So uh, today we'll be talking about um, tree stands and, and actually more more than just tree stands, but um, primarily we'll be talking tree stands. Um, so so if you're going to hunt, um, you're going to need to be hunting from somewhere. Um, and um, depending on location for deer, um, typically the East Coast would be classified as, as an area where you would still hunt. Is where So you're going to be hunting from one spot. Um, waiting for the deer to come to you. Um, out west, you could do more of a spot and stalk and a lot of the terrain in the open area where you're glassing and finding deer and then then figuring out how to close the gap to, to get a shot on them. But um, in this terrain, um, with the senses of deer, you, you tend to, your best bet is to, to hunker down and let the deer move to you. So we'll go through um, the th three main types of uh, tree stands and then we'll also go over um, ground blinds. Um, these are very easily um, obtained and um, kind of a starting point um, for new hunters. Um, in this in this picture you can see I got a picture here of uh, this one it's a kind of a, a raised box blind but really it looks like you could live there and i don't know where it is but I, someday i'm going to try to find it and buy it and live there myself that would be a, a good thing i think so um so um let's get started then um so why are we going to hunt from a tree stand um basically we, we want to improve our odds on, on seeing deer and being able to get shot at deer um and the easiest way to do that is, is to get elevated. Um, so if you if you raise yourself up, um, particularly in, in wooded areas, you, you can just see so much more. Um, and the more, you know, if you can see more, you can shoot more. Um, and um, so that's always a good thing. Um, and also um, you're gonna, we're gonna try to, uh, um, you know, do what we can to, you know, kind of combat the deer senses. Um, so deer are always wary of their surroundings are always looking for predators, um, but they tend to be, they tend to look, um, at ground level. Um, so being up out of their, their main line of sight gives you a big advantage. Um, also if you're up, up in the air, you can, you can kind of keep your scent further from them as well. Um, so if you, if you're up in, in a tree stand, um, the scent is not going to drop straight down particularly if you have a good wind it, your 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 scent hopefully is being blown away more easily um of course if you have a bad wind um then it just it can make it worse right um where the, the wind if it's you know turns and comes to your back um and now it's just it's it makes it easier to pull your scent to them so but um you know that's why you always you have to always have to to hunt the wind um and uh that's important. Um, big, a big factor is uh, you, you don't want to get caught moving. Their, their, their eyesight isn't good, but they pick up movement very well. Um, so um, if you can see them, um, then you can learn to move only when they're moving and not looking at you, that sort of thing. Um, so if, if, if you're in a real thick area, sometimes the deer can get so close to you that before you see them right then then you, you can get you can kind of get stuck where you can't you don't have a chance to move to either you know move your rifle or pull your bow that sort of thing um so um an another thing let me, let me say up front um I, i'm a primarily a bow hunter um and so a lot of things are, are kind of more important when you're bow hunting only because you need to be closer to the deer um, typical shot is, you know, like 20 yards on a deer. So, um, all these factors are, are more important, the closer the deer is to you. So, um, not that they're not important, um, you know, but if the deer is 150 yards away, um, some of these things aren't quite as important. So let me just get that out. So, um, also if you're in a, a raised position when you're shooting, um, your shot angle is going to be downwards. So, um, as, you know, hunter safety 101, right? You have to know what's beyond your target. Um, cause if you miss the deer, where's that bullet or arrow going to go? Um, and, and if you're elevated and shooting down, chances are that that bullet, even if you shoot over the back of that deer, that bullet's going to hit the ground, you know, maybe 10 feet beyond the deer or something. Um, whereas if you were shooting, um, 
at that deer from ground level, right? If that deer goes up, a bullet goes over that deer's back, that, that bullet, depending on the terrain, could travel quite a distance. Um, so it, and that's why you always have to make a safe shot. So um, when you're elevated, you just, you get more safe shots because um, most likely the, the uh, you can see exactly what's behind your deer and where that bullet will go. And it's usually going to be the ground, which is nice. So, um, and um, also um, if you're hunting, you know, public land or where there's other hunters, um, if you're up in, up the tree, you're more visible to the other hunters. Um, you're wearing your hunter orange in rifle season. Um, so um, it's, it'd be just a safer situation where if someone were to see, see you, you know, um, then they, you know, can be safe and not shoot in your direction. Um, whereas if you're on the ground, they, they may not have been able to see, see your hunter orange. So, so that's, that's the reasons why, uh, some of the reasons why we hunt elevated. Um, okay, why not hunt from a tree stand? It is more dangerous. Um, and I, I, at the end of this, I, I have a whole section on safety, so we'll get to there. But um, let me just point out that most um, majority of, of injuries, fatalities um, related to hunted come from tree stand accidents, right? People falling. It's, you know, it's not being shot, you know, by your buddy. It's, it's falling out of a tree stand. So um, we'll talk about that later more. Um, if, uh, you know, if, particularly if you're starting up, right, you got a whole bunch of things to buy, camo, boots, rifle, and this is one more thing, you know, to pony up more money um, to go hunt. So that's, you know, whereas you can just go out hunt from the ground in, in a lot of New York, North Carolina. Um, some counties you cannot hunt rifle from the ground. Wake County is one. Um, but you could hunt shotgun from Wake County or some other, most of the counties you can shoot rifle from the ground. So it's just, uh, there is a cost to this. Nothing's free. So, um, and then again, it's more dangerous and, and I'm not repeating this to scare anybody. I just want you to be serious about um, taking the precautions to be safe when you're hunting. Um, so um, another reason or limitation of, of the, uh, tree stands, you're, you're kind of in a fixed position, right? Um, some of these tree stands for one person are really small, so you, you can't move around very well. You might just be in a seated position. So if things come behind you, you, you can't, you may not be able to get, you know, get in position to take a shot, um, which is if you were from the ground, it'd be totally easy to, to, to move around um, and, and get shots. Um, so, um, so how you shoot, it'll be dependent, you know, how your, your options to shoot from any particular stand will be unique to that stand. And so, and let me mention, it's dangerous to hunt only because, right, it's, this is basic physics, right? Um, potential energy, um, which would be, you know, your, your, your body weight um, in relation to the, how high you are off the ground. So um, again, I'm not scaring you. I just, I want you to, to be safe. Um, also, um, when you're, you're hunting elevated, um, you're more susceptible to, to the elements, particularly the wind. I mean, the rain, you, you can get rained on in the ground, but it's easy to move, you know, on the ground and move under a cedar tree or something. But when you're up a tree stand, um, and it's raining, maybe it's really the wind, the wind, the wind all makes a difference. Um, and, um, and, uh, when you're up there and in the end of the, the you know, end of the season, cold December day, and there's not a leaf in, in the woods that to, to slow up the breeze, a breeze will whip right through um, and really chill you up too. So, okay, let's, let's move on. We'll start going through the different stand types. So um, I'm going to go through these in my, my order of preference. And that's, that's my personal opinion. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about the pros and cons of each and, you know, depending on it, um, each of you, you might, you'll develop, you know, similar or totally different preferences. Um, so, well, we're going to go over, uh, the climber, um, the lock on, uh, ladder stands, and then we'll hit on ground blinds. Um, and then I'll go briefly go over, you know, a list of kind of other options. 
less less popular or less accessible, I should say, as well. So, okay, uh, the climber. Um, this is my favorite my favorite stand to hunt out of. Um, it's it's probably the most mobile. Um, there's used, there's two sections to a climber. There's an upper section and a lower section. Basically, you stand on the lower platform. And you can grab the upper portion and you can slide that up the tree a little bit. And then you put your hold your weight on the upper portion and you can pull the bottom portion up a little bit. So you'll kind of inchworm up up the tree. You go up, you know, the top goes up a foot, the bottom goes a foot, and you just creep your way up the tree. Um, and, uh, of course, when you're doing that, the, these you're limited to trees with no branches. Um and um, certain size trees. You know, the tree can't be too small or too big. Um, the, all these stands will have some sort of, um, this is a, a, a summit stand and it has a, a metal wire cable um, that's rubber coated and it has little notches on it. So that wraps around the tree. You can kind of see that on the top there, there's a couple notches. So you can adjust on how much of that um, cable's let out for the different size tree, um, but there's a limit on how, how big or small that gets. So um, there's a, a certain size tree, I forget, you know, stand will, it'll, it'll probably tell you when you buy it, if it can take up to a whatever 24 inch diameter tree or whatever. So, but trees can be too small or too big for that um, too. Um, they're kind of about the smallest profile. Um, because it's just the, what you're looking at is all all, all that's going to be on the tree, and so when, when you get up the tree, there's there's no ladder, nothing to to you know indicate there's there's something else going on. So it's just you up this tree and, and that and that stand. Um, and and since that's um, so, and also you can you can pick your height. Um, um, kind of the more I hunt, the higher I go. Um, and me, I, I personally, I don't mind heights at all. Um, I've done some tree work, so and I've, I can, I'm comfortable 100 feet up a tree. Um, I actually enjoy it. So um, this sort of thing, again, you know, some people just can't do heights, and if you can't do heights, you just don't feel safe. Um, then you know, you, you have to be comfortable and feel safe to hunt good. So if, if this scares you to be 10 feet off the ground and something like this, then, you know, that's, you, you, it's not, you know, I would not want you to be hunting like that and just be miserable all the time, scared of falling. So, um, so, uh, but again, so again, this, this is my preference. So, um, and partly it's cause you can pick the height. Um, and it, um, there are issues with going higher, particularly bow hunting, um, so if you go higher, cause the deer I'm shooting, if I'm shooting 20 yards away and I might be 30 feet up, so I'm 10 yards up. Um, so the shot, my angle, the trajectory of my arrow is, is at a fairly steep angle. So my entry point and my exit point on either side of the deer is, is going to vary. So you have to understand how your arrows going to, going to penetrate through that deer. Um, cause you know, there's, you know, they're the vitals and you have to get through the, the kill zone and things. So that angle, um, when you're hunting higher, um, you have to understand that and, and you know, shoot appropriately for that. Um, so um, the height in rifle hunting, it wouldn't be a, as much of an issue because typically you're shooting further. Um, but Right, and just because you're rifle and hunting doesn't mean the deer's not going to come by at, at 10 yards. <laughs> so the same sort of thing, um, you know. So if a deer comes close, um, you know, um, when you're rifle hunting too, you you know that understanding that angle um, is uh, important. So the cons of the climber is it, it is harder to climb. It's more physically demanding because um, you're doing the upper body and lifting your legs up and lifting that stand up, which is if you've ever been to a gym where it has the little exercise where you can put your arms on a thing with a little handles and, and lift your legs up, do knee raises. That's kind of the motion you're going through when you, when you're lifting the, the bottom up. It's so it's, 
And if you haven't done it in a while, you know, um, you'll feel your abs. It's a good ab workout. So um, it, it is kind of more demanding. It's more, you know, it, there's a technique to it. Um, how, how, how much you're going to move the top and how much you're going to move the bottom. Um, and uh, it, it, and it's, there's a technique and depending on the trees um, and the, the bark matters, pine or soft, these dig into the pine a little easier. If you get like a hard or like a poplar, um, kind of a harder bark, smoother bark, it's, it's a little trickier a little, to get it to grip. Um, so you have to just understand how, how, how it works. Um, so it's a little harder, it's a little noisier. You got all this moving metal. Um, you have to, you know, if you, the, the two pieces stack together and you can see the, the straps, there's backpack straps. So you can throw this on your back as, as you go, go into the woods, which is nice. Um, and then when you're taking it apart, you, you got two metal pieces, right? And you got to be sure, try to be careful not to clang them together. Cause nothing will spook deer more than like, you know, metallic non, cause it's non-natural sounds, right? You know, metal on metal will, you know, always trigger a deer to run away basically. So, um, and they're a little slower to climb. So you have to attach it to the tree first and then you have to go up and you're going to inch worming your way up your tree inch, you know, foot, 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 foot. And then you got to get all the way up, which is, which is slower. And, and like I said, harder than if you just had any other sort of, stand that had a ladder you just walk up and climb up the ladder um, um and then again i mentioned already the tree um has to have no limbs and you know um trunk size the tree trunk size can only be so big um but as, as as you get more um skilled at it um i you know because particularly oak trees oak trees at the bottom five foot of the oak tree tends to get, can get fat, much fatter than, you know, just to five feet up. So um, if you can learn to attach the, this to the tree at, you know, five feet, then um, you can climb that tree where you can't get this thing around the bottom couple feet. So um, I'm tall, so I can do that. And then, but then it, you have to get up into it. So you have to be able to, to uh, use that grab the, the railing, you know, on the top piece and basically do a pull up and then I can, you know, flip my feet up onto the, onto the, the bottom piece. So, um, and that's, so, you know, not everybody can do that. Um, and, um, but if you want to hunt, it's, it'd be a good motive to, to do, be able to do those sort of things. So, um, you can also rotate if you're on the tree, you know, you can, you can rotate it, right. You know, you can stay at the same height. You can just rotate it around the tree for, and I'll do that. Um, either to move out of the sun or sometimes to move into the sun. So when it's cold out, you know, I might want to get a little sun on me. So I'll, I might rotate to the sun side of the tree. Um, and if it's, if it's September bow season, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to stay, if the sun's hitting, coming through the canopy somehow hitting me, I might wrote this, rotate that thing to get the, you know, the sun in on the other side of the tree trunk than me. So I put myself in the shade. So, um, that's another trick. All right. So the, the next, um, well, some notes here, Oh, make sure I covered everything. Um, yeah, so it's, I would say it's the most versatile and mobile. Um, so generally if people don't have property to hunt where they can hang a stand, you know, you can hang a stand on public land and it'll probably be stolen <laughs> very quickly. Um, so if you're going to bring it in and bring it out, um, this is the stand to go. So, uh, most people who are, who are hunting public land, um, th this is the go-to stand. Um, I would suggest going light, right? And there's all these, you know, anything extra thing it's usually there's a dollar sign attached to that so they're primarily going to be made out of aluminum or steel um aluminum's lighter and so it's going to be more expensive right so you can buy the same you know, summit comes in a steel and aluminum one right and of course the aluminum one's more expensive um but i would suggest that um and um comfortable right there's all different varieties now they're they're becoming more comfortable there's 
the, some of these have a sling seat, which are nicely padded. So there's more mesh seating going in, um, and they're just getting more comfortable. So, and I am a kind of a comfort guy. I like if I'm going to do something all day, I want I want to be comfortable doing it. Um, and and that's um, primarily because if you're comfortable, then you can hunt better and longer. All right, it, there's nothing worse than just being fidgety, your butt hurting, you're just not comfortable, you know, and, and it's just, you're moving, you're moving, you're liable to spook deer just because you can't sit still or you just, you're just dreading being there, right? Um, so, but if you're nice and comfy, then you can just, just chill and enjoy the outdoors um, and uh, just, just quietly, patiently wait for those deer to show up. Um and this is true for any stand you want to practice and more so for this one because it is more to climb but you want to practice going up and down the tree um again you need to be confident and comfortable to hunt well and and so you got to know that you can go up and down this thing um efficiently and safely um and again practice like you're gonna hunt and that's that's true if you're gonna sh how if you're sh practicing your shooting um, you always, always shoot like from where you plan on hunting, you know, the positions you plan on hunting. And, and also when you're using the, the climber, um, practice like you're going to hunt. Um, have, you know, your, your hunting clothes on, your hunting boots on. Um, figure out what you're going to do with your gear. You got to, you're going to have to pull up, you know, have a, a pull up rope to pull up your bow or your rifle, or your pack. Um, and practice in the dark because usually you're either starting in the dark or finishing the hunt in the dark so you're either going up or down in the dark um and, and you want to you want to be comfortable you want to know you can do it right w without being able to see well you should have a, a headlamp um you know i always have a headlamp with me i, I try not to use it actually though um because that you know it gets dark and i'm going to come down um uh you know i don't know where the deer are right so i i don't want to to you know you know i'm already gonna have to go down this tree you know try not to make no, as little noise as possible i also don't want to you know have a light shining around drawing attention to myself as well again figure out what you're gonna do with your deep gear you know you pull up you got to figure out what, if you're gonna have a hook or whatever a little screw in bow hanger to hang your bow or your hook your rifle you're gonna you know have your rifle um you know, across the rail, the front rail, or just prop it up. Just just know what you're going to do if you're going to have a, a, a pack. I, I use a fanny pack all the time because, um, one, if I, ha if I have this climber on my back going into the woods, I, I can use the, the waist pack and have it the pack part on the front of me um, and because I have the tree stand on my back, so I can carry it that way. Um, and then when I get to, up the tree, I, I can take that pack off and I just wrap it around the tree and snap it around the tree um so i don't have to worry about how you know if i had a backpack i'd have to figure out what i'm gonna do with the backpack um you know a hook put a hook into the tree but with the the fanny pack i just snap it in and, and i'm good to go um and uh and in general you know all all these um stands there, there there's an element of trying to hide the tree stand amongst you know nature um so you're going to climb a tree that has no other branches you know uh, below you so you can't you can't use this the climber uh, to to get you know above a branch you know hide among, among branches um so one of the things you can look for is you, you can just try to if you see um you know tree a climbable tree but if you see maybe there's a cedar tree near it or a, a smaller sapling tree that only you know has branches that go up 15 feet or so sometimes you, you you can find a location on the bigger tree that and position yourself so you're being blocked by other trees so um and that that's so in this one it's a little bit harder because you can't have branches on that tree where we get into the, the other stands um you, you can still hunt from trees with other branches below where you're hunting from so um okay that's it for climbers and we'll move on to to lock-ons um so the lock-on would be my second preference 
Um, it, um, it's, it's usually not much bigger as a foot, a footprint as, as the part, you know, the stand part, but you're going to have to have some sort of ladder mechanism to get up to this, the lock on. Um, so the lock-ons either usually just have a, a, a the, the one in the top picture here is a small one where it has a strap and you just you strap it around to the tree. Um, others have where you you're kind of strap you might strap. Well, I have a, I have a millennium a couple of millenniums and it has like you strap like this um, aluminum block that has a hole in it to the tree, and then the stand has a stem that slides in that hole. So it's a little easier just to get that little block attached to the tree and then you can you can bring your your the stand up and slide it in there um but to do that you of course you have to get up to that point um so you're going to have either there's usually two varieties of climbing sticks on the lower picture here this is a sectional that comes in usually they're up to 20 foot now usually um it might be five sections of four foot you know, five, four foot sections or four or five foot sections. And you connect these together and there's a strap, several straps going up this as you go. Um, so you would have to um, climb this thing as you're strapping it. So you can do the bottom strap when you're standing on the ground and then you're gonna have to start climbing it and to get to the other straps to it, strap it to the tree. Um, and we'll, we'll cover this in the safety um, section we'll talk about. To do that, you're gonna, you, you wanna use a, a, a safety harness that has a lineman's belt. So you have a belt that goes around the tree to hold you to the tree as you're climbing up this. And then you can, you can continue to climb and strap this thing all the way up to the, you know, the 20 foot that it goes. And then you would bring up, or, you know, if you're, you, know, you could have had a rope attached to you that it, where the other end is attached to the, the the stand, and then you could pull up that rope to you, and attach that to where you're gonna you know the, the top portion. Um, when you do con connect that, you want to connect that um, so you can s safely and comfortably move from the ladder to the stand. So you want to be moving lateral. You don't want to be trying to go from the the, the ladder, the climbing sticks up up to the stand so you want to put the stand above this um, that would not be safe so um, and then once you get into there you can remove your lineman's belt and attach um, the safety harness tether to the tree and if you're going to use it um, we'll talk about this more too you can you you would if you're going to continue you reuse this which you probably would um, they're generally not done one one time you know they're not used to set up and hunt and then remove. So you would want to put a lifeline, which would be a, a permanent safety line you could attach to at the bottom and climb with. So, um, so these you're limited to um, the tree size by how long these straps are, um, and they vary. Um, but my ones I have are will get me around a bigger tree that my my climbing stand would not get on um so you, you can you can get them on a little bit bigger tree and you can get them on trees with limbs um you just need kind of you need to have the ones that the, they connect so you need a straight line kind of going up the tree where there's no branches but usually you, you can you can get that figured out um and then hopefully you can you know where you put the stand you can put that maybe above i love being able to put the stand just above a branch Right, that really blocks you, and you got some, you know, you know. Of course, when there's still leaves on the tree, um, it does a good job of, of blocking, obstructing you, and so you're not silhouetted, you're not sticking out on this tree all by yourself. You're kind of blocked, and that that really helps. So, um, some of these models are kind of meant to be mobile, um, and then the climbing sticks would see so on the top picture there. You can see there's a, those. Those climbing sections are all independent, um, and those are more versatile if, if you have a lot of limbs because you can. They don't need to be stacked up. You don't need a straight, you know, twenty foot run. You can move it, you know, six inches to the left or right, um, whatever to to move around some some branches to as you're climbing it. Um, and they said, and they do make some lighter um, 
sticks like this, sectional sticks. Um, they tend to be expensive. I don't know. They're starting to use some carbon in them, made them. So maybe, you know, um, lighter than aluminum um, and strong it might be carbon. But um, there, I know there's some that are meant to be kind of mobile. So you would, you would take a, your, your climber and your four, your stack of these. They, they, all those um, separate um, pieces would usually stack together pretty into a little bundle. And you could strap that to your stand and, and hunt that way, you know, mobile go off wherever, kind of like the climber. But, um, so in general is, you know, um, the downside of these, there, there's usually more to getting them up. There's a little bit more time and effort to get the ladder up, you know, the, this 20 foot section of climbing sticks attached to the tree. Um, and then they get the stand up there. So, um, um, so that's why, you know, there, there's an effort there. And, and again, most of these aren't mobile. They're not meant to be, you know, taken down right away. So, um, so, but that's good. Particularly, I mean, if you can, if you can find the right place for these, um, hunting, you know, there's a general thing, hunting from the same spot too much can always be a problem. You can burn an area out if you just, if you're just too much hunting out of one spot, the deer will, you know, every time you hunt, you you kind of just dis disturb there's a disturbance level and, and the deer will react to that and if you do it too much they'll learn just to avoid that area so but um that's that's true for for a lot of these stands and uh the other downside of this is uh you're limited the height's limited so um i mean you could get those separate sectional ones yeah you could i guess you really want to be limited if you just keep buying more sections um of the of the separate ones whereas uh most of the sticks um i think the longest i've seen is a 20 foot section so and um the, i'm more of a 30 foot hunter these days Um, so the notes make sure I covered all this. Yeah, not as versatile uh, or mobile as a climber. Um, you are able to hide it. Um, again, um, I'll, I'll say this through anything. You know, you want something that's comfortable for you. And that's a personal thing. Some people, you know, uh, are, you know, I don't know, bigger guys like me tend to, you know, you know, I need some cushion. <laughs> I know guys will hunt off a, a five gallon plastic buck and they'll be fine. You know, I can't do that. Uh, so, uh, um, if anything, like I said again, because if you're comfortable, you can hunt longer and better and stay longer and, and you know, it gives you the opportunity to, to shoot more deer. So, um, also, I mentioned this, um, you know, if you're going to have this permanent, you know, you're going to leave it up there, um, you're going to want to put a lifeline on it to make it um, safer and easier to climb the second time. So, walk on. Okay, um, the third um, type of stands we'll cover are ladder stands. Um, and the ladders, these ladders are probably the easiest to climb because you're just basically climbing a ladder once you get them up. Um, so they're, they're quick and, you know, the, the lock-ons can be fairly quick. They're just the ladders, the ladders are easier to climb. They're wider. Um, they're further away from the tree. The, the, the lock-on the climbing sticks, right, they, they, there's usually a piece um, of the, the sticks that kind of project out and that keeps the sticks um, away from the tree, but it may only be, you know, four inches. Um, I have big feet. So when I'm climbing those, you know, my toes are hitting the tree. And so I'm kind of, I'm kind of climbing on my, the balls of my foot and not, you know, the, the arch of my foot. So they're a little trickier to, to climb where the la these ladders are just it's like a ladder. So, um, and quick and easy. So if you have these things set up, you know, you, if, then it's, it's a quick, you get to the stand, you can zip up the stand and, and you're hunting in, you know, 15 seconds. That's nice. Um, so um, cons, I guess, are set up time for these. These are, um, usually bulkier. I mean, it can be some single person ones that aren't too bad. Um, but there's a lot of two person ones that are, are kind of big, heavy, bulky. 
Um, and so you're going to, you're going to need, um, more effort to get those up and you're going to need help. Um, you're going to need a couple people, usually at least two, three is usually always better for this sort of thing, particularly a double stand. Um, so these these are, are are definitely not mobile. Although I know a guy who and his him and his buddy carried a double ladder stand out to game lands and, and set it up and hunted once, and they, they did that once, just just once. It's now just it's funny to talk about that, but uh, I don't think they enjoyed the hunt that well. So, um, and uh, it's a fixed height. Um, again, these they can run sixteen foot to twenty foot, maybe. Uh, maybe there's a couple single ones that might be a little bit taller. Maybe I don't know. Um, but you're gonna, you're gonna hunt from a, the fixed height, um, and there's um, really no adjusting that. So where this thing attaches, you you have to make sure if it's a 20 footer, you got to make you got to find a tree that has a spot on it. You know, at 20 foot, right? You know, um, and there's not a big honking branch there. You know that that you want to. Uh, uh, that'll be in the way. So, um, and also the profile is where, like I said, oh, the doubles can be big. Um, they also have the ladder, and that and that extends out from the tree. Um, the the climbing sticks attached to the tree, um, and you know, usually when you set it up, you, you want you're going to put that you know on the side away from where you you know the tree stands facing. Um, so with the thought, you know, the deer, you know, if they're out where you, you know, expect them to be, they won't see the ladder from that perspective. Um, where the ladder sticks out from the tree towards, you know, the forward way. So it kind of sticks out. So again, you know, kind of like, we, you know, location, if you can find um, a tree where, yeah, again, another a cedar trees or little saplings or bushes, um, you know that are happen to be in the right spot can can block the latter portion of this and, and help. Um, you know I, I've seen a lot of these on on farm fields, and they'll just stick them on on the edge. The trees are on the edge of the field, and they stick out into the field, and it makes it very noticeable for the deer. And I you know if I'm going to set a stand like this on on a field, I'm not going to put it on the very edge. I'm going to put it back you know at least you know, not a tree that's behind the, the edge ones um just so it's not completely visible and easy to pick up um because the deer will respond even if it's there all season the deer respond to it they 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 tend to you know they may come out to the field but they, they tend to come out uh you know away from where the stands are on the field so it's just you know it's survival instincts they, they they figure that stuff out so um let's see notes make sure i cover this nah, not a first mobile um oh i mentioned so uh, you know hunting with a double ladder stand it's it's great to be able to hunt with others you know hunting with your child your parent uh your sibling your soon to be spouse anything right um it, it's it's just it's nice to be able to share that 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 sort of those moments hunting so and that's that's good um again i said these are tend to be the biggest stands and they extend from the tree you know try, try to pick your location wisely um um go comfortable that's a, a you know theory my theme of mine <laughs> i like to be comfortable so I do have one. I have a one double ladder stand, and and I use it. You know, that's end of season. I'll I'll try to rifle hunt from it, and I try to hunt with somebody, um, um, out of that stand. And you know, I upgraded my my cushion on that. You know, um, I got bought the. It's got to be three inches. It's it's just like the nicest cushion. Um, very happy with that. It's just super comfy. I love it. So um again safety we'll talk about these use a lifeline we'll talk about that um always be safe okay um so now we're going to move to some other options that aren't tree related ground blind and i'm just specifically i, I i'm going to kind of reference the pop-up lines these are you know fairly inexpensive you, you can buy these um they they tend to um they're kind of like folding chair 
technology they can you know each side can pop out and um i've hunted in a smaller one which it, it kind of folded up kind of like i don't know if you've ever seen those windshield shade things that you can kind of twist and fold up i i had the i was able to hunt someone else's little gave me that to use and it was a cool little thing because it folded up really small real light um you know probably weighed two pounds maybe um but it popped up to you know uh you know one person or maybe a two-person pop-up line kind of like the bottom one um and uh and, and i have a couple ones that look like the one on the top there um and they're fairly big um and they're 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 big enough you know where to hunt with I've hunted with three people. We put three chairs in there. I was able to, I was taking a, a, a youth hunting and I was able to bring the dad. So it was nice. All three of us got in there for the hunt. It was nice. So, um, so um, a big thing, bonus to these is, you know, whenever it rains, you know, I always wish I was in my ground blind. <laughs> so, um you know, but I may not always be, but it, it's it's nice to to be in a ground blind uh, and uh, and not worry about the rain. Um, and uh, as far as rain goes, deer deer will will still move in the rain. If it's a downpour, they won't. Um, but uh, a drizzle rain, normal rain, right? They'll, they'll still move in that. Um, and actually, bucks I, I've I've noticed bucks will, will tend to move earlier in, in bad weather like that. Not real bad, but if it's misty, a little rainy, the, uh, I've seen deer come out where I didn't expect them to be out. They were normally, they would not come out to dark. They're, they're showing up uh, um, in, in that ba in bad weather. And also it's great to hunt after bad weather because if you get a, a patch of bad weather, storms and stuff, the deer will bed up. You know they'll find some some protection to bed up during the storm, but when the storm's over, um, they may want to go feed. So right after a storm, you know, before storms and after storms are always good times to hunt. Um, so of course you got a ground blind, you you can get out there when it's when it's still raining. Um, so that's that's good thing about these these blinds. Um, they also conceal movement and your scent and your sound, which it's ideal. Um, if you want to hunt with younger kids, the kids who can't sit still, aren't can't be quiet. Um, it really, you know, contains in that the sound and the movement. Um, I know some kid, guys who will take their kids hunting, and the kids they bring a blanket, and the kid will lay down and nap, or you know, playing on his laptop while the dad hunts. <laughs> you know, it's it's convenient, you know, uh, for that. So, uh, um. The, the downside of, of limited visibility. So you, you're on the ground again. You know the, we talked about why. You know there's a benefit to hunting at elevation. You can see further and clear up above things. Um, when you're on the ground, you, you're limited. So there's, every tree and bush kind of can obstruct you, and you just don't have the angle. Um, right. If the train, depending on the train, it, um, and the train around here is tough because there's. You know, there's a lot of ground that's just not flat. You know, it, it almost appears to be flat. But I know I was one field I hunt. Um, I was turkey hunting it, and it, it's a field, and it, and it has rolls in it. And there, there's areas um, where it dips down. So when I'm, when you're hunting from the ground, um, like turkeys can can come out in that area, and you, you know you'd be lucky to see the head, <laughs> right? Um, so that sort of thing. So you just sometimes you just you're limited. Um, so, um, and uh, again, the safety issues, um, rifle, again, same, same sort of thing, you hunt from the ground with a rifle. Um, it, it's trickier because you have to be sure of where your bullet's going to go if you miss the target. Um, and the lower you are, the, the more um, trajectory issues you have, depending on the terrain. Of course, if you're on the top of a ridge, shooting down a ridge, um, you know, to a creek bottom, that's that's not a problem. But if you're on a, a field um, that rolls, you know, it's 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 um, a concern. So you uh, just have to make sure you know what's behind your target always. So um, notes: it's first they are versatile, mobile. Um, kind of multiple people. I mentioned that. Oh, get again, comfort. 
make sure you get comfortable chairs. Um, great for kids. Oh, and when you're and you're hunting, these ground blinds are always are going to be black on the inside, right? It's, that's like the kind of the the background color. Um, so um, is black. So you're gonna, you know, the inside will be black. So wear black instead of camo black. Um, you just kind of disappear. Um, so again, check your local laws for for shooting rifle again wake county i know you cannot shoot rifle from the ground um one thing you're going to want to try to do with these if you're hunting deer is is um brush the blind in just take some branches cedar branches are really good um and usually the blinds will have little straps or something on the outside so you can stick branches and you know limbs and brush or corn stalks or whatever in those um to, to help Blunt, you know, hide it and make it blend in. Um, okay. Um, so there, there's, we covered, um, you know, minimal of the, the different types. So there, there's some other ones. There's box blinds, and they could be just, a, you know, simple wood thing, structure on the ground, or they can be elevated. They can be like the one I had on that, the, the front page, where it's, you know, uh, sleeps for refrigerator satellite you got the whole thing run hot and cold running water or not um and uh or they can on these bottom pictures here on here you got um this this nature you're using some you know dead limbs and things cedar branches to to build to build a little makeshift blind just to hide behind and shield yourself from view from from the deer so and uh let me see, I got more pictures, corn, yeah. So here, yeah. Um, here's a picture of corn, I, and I, I'm not positive. I think you see the kind of the mound, of the corn stalks. I think I think that is a ground blind brushed in really, really well. <laughs> um, or it could just be corn stalks made, you know, they made a ground blind completely out of corn stalks. So I got the feeling that's a ground blind with corn stalks all wrapped around it but that that just disappears completely that's no one's I, you can barely see it so the deer can't see it um you could use that you get a simple piece of fabric as a real simple light thing you could fold that fabric up put it in your pocket and then oh you know if you want to i'm going to hunt here and just just get a couple sticks prop that up and you're good to go um a tripod that, not very common around here tripods are very useful when there's not trees to hunt from um, Texas is, is a big place for tripods. They, they have smaller trees, mesquite trees, and they're just not really big enough or high enough to, to um, be good tree stands. Um, but you can, you can put a, a tripod among them and hunt from that. Um, I've seen them here usually on farm fields where there'll be, you know, there's just no trees in, in, in the monks, the, the big chunks of farm fields it might be different fields and so they'll put this in the center of, of different fields to, to hunt from um, because there's no trees in that area and it's it's mobile you, these this particular one looks like it's pretty pretty light those legs may you know fold together and you throw that in the back of a pickup and, and move it to where you need to move it um, um, the one on the bottom right is a tree saddle um, it's kind of there's a, a niche niche hunters that use that and i have one it's uh, the cool thing about that is uh you can move around the tree um again so i talked about this the stands where you're fixed you're you're wherever your your, your seat is you're, you're sitting there you can't you can't move the stand you can rotate the climber but that's not something you're going to do when a deer is approaching um the, these these tree saddles you, you they're you're tethered up to the tree and you can rotate around so you can as you're waiting for the deer to come into into to range you can keep the tree between you and the deer um you still need a, a way to get up so they climbing sticks um are popular with this these guys um and then you might have a little platform or not um to put their feet on or you can these guys can just put their feet against the tree they can also you see he has knee pads so one thing they'll do is they'll, they'll put their knees against the tree and just kind of as a way to just just kind of curl up and, and rest and take a nap or something um but the saddle portions are generally very comfortable um 
they're like a swing. You kind of get this swing feeling, you know, where you could just kind of sit in the swing and you're just hanging there. Um, they're, they're cool. Uh, not really recommended on this, I would say, for, for people starting up. But uh, if you're into tree climbing, then go for it. Um, and, um, well, and I'll go back. So, you know, there's, again, um, more established hunting locations, you know, big farms, wealthy people um, may have more box blinds, permanent structures and that sort of thing. Um, but um, they're just not, you know, unless you got land on money. And right now, if, if it's made of wood, <laughs> it, uh, it's very expensive. So. Anyhow, accessories, these are, you know, I talk about comfort, right? You know, chairs, you, you make sure you got a chair that you can sit in for, for hours. Um, shooting sticks. I, if I'm shooting a rifle from a tree stand, I use shooting sticks. Um, even if the, the stands have a railing, they're usually too low for me. And so I prefer using the shooting sticks. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a tennis ball on the bottom to make sure, because depending on the different platforms of the stands, they might be um, slots, you know, where a shooting sticks may not, it would slide through. If you put a tennis ball on there, um, it won't slide through um, and then uh, makes it a little quieter too. And then you can rest that sh the shooting stick. Um, usually I use a, a single shooting stick, single leg shooting stick. And then I can just lean it against the railing if it has a railing. Um, and then I can move it, raise the shooting stick up to, you know, my gun level or eye level, right? So I don't, I'm not doing the, the, the crouch, you know, the crouching thing down, trying to lower my, my body down to the railing. And it makes it a little bit more easier to move left and right um, and, and keep on a deer if he's moving, that sort of thing. Um, the umbrella thing, I, I again, when it rains, I, I always wish I had bought one. I've never bought one, and I probably won't. Um, it's just that's I, that's optional for me. Um, you know, um, I can I can deal with some rain, <laughs> so that doesn't bother. Rain doesn't bother me, but uh, um, yeah, I do try to minimize what I, I do carry with me. Um, then we see a, a, down over here is a bow holder. Um, I'll use bow holders on if I have a, a lock on or a ladder stand I'm using. I will use a bow holder because uh, that's a permanent. I tend not to use one when I use my climber. I will just lay the, the, my bow across uh, the, the front railing. Um, and uh, so it's just something. It's one thing I, I, I um, you know, it's like if, if it's I call that's an optional one for me. So if I have if I have if I can do it another way, um, then that's one more thing I don't have to to carry, and one more thing I have to set up when I get up the tree. So the heater, you know, if you're gonna have some ground blinds and box blinds and fancy things, you know, you know, I guess why not have a have a heater? Oh, so um, pull up ropes are gonna be kind of a requirement. Um, I. I this one has a clip on it. I, I don't use any clips just because I've had them break. So I always just, I tie a knot on things um, whenever I do and I'll, I'll tie the knot. And so, um, and um, it's just what I do. Um, handsaw, if you're going to use a climber or any of these, um, having a little pocket handsaw is, is really good. Um, I have a, a smaller one than the one in the picture that, that I keep in my little my waist pack, my fanny pack thing there. Um, that way, you know, uh, if I pick a tree and I, I want to use my climber and it's got a limb, I'm like, I'll, I'll cut it, you know, as long as it's a place, you know, where you're allowed to, to cut limbs. But um, so I'll do that. Um, and otherwise, when, when you're when you're setting up some of these other ones, um, if they're like a permanent, like if it's going to be a ladder stand, a lock on something you're going to hunt several times from, um, it's good to have like a, a, some sort of, a, you know, pole saw sort of thing. Um, so you, you can cut shooting lanes um, um, so that, you know, you're going to hunt there. So you want to be able to have good shooting lanes. You don't cut too much. Like I said, you, you, you want to keep enough stuff 
to hide you from the deer. Um, but you want to, you want a, at least one good shooting lane. So a pole saw comes in handy because you might be cutting a limb off some other tree that, that just comes in your shooting path of where you think the deer are going to be coming from. And again, there's, there's the old waste pack. That's, that's my, my standard pack. The downside of the, that pack, obviously you can't stick a jacket in there. So if I do want to bring another layer, I just loop that layer over the pack, that fanny pack, you know, to, to carry it in. I loop it over that and, and carry it in that way. And that works for me. Um, no, it's okay. I would, you know, if it hunt, lets you hunt better and longer, um, you know, go for it, but you know, don't, don't overdo it. Don't, don't bring way too much stuff that you don't need. And, you know, basically if you don't, if you end up, you'll see, if you don't use it, don't, don't bring it <laughs> right. Use, you know, um, minimize sometimes, um, comfortable chair, seat cushion, just, yeah, you want to, you want to be able to stay there, right. And hunt. So, like I said, I went over the shooting sticks. Can be used from a stand. I, I that's that's my standard. Um, yeah, and if you have a climber, you, you need a small handsaw. Um, and the waste pack, yeah, that's kind of the accessory notes. Okay, safety. This this is a super important. Um, um, it's the number one you know cause of serious death and injuries and in, in hunting related injuries is from tree stand. So. Um, and that's from people falling who are not attached to the tree. So the solution is always be attached to the tree. Okay. Um, so, you know, hunting harness, safety harnesses or fall arrest systems, as they're technically called, will have a tether. Um, and so um, when these first came out, a lot of, you know, that you would have that tether and then it would a piece that wraps around the tree. So, these were used, people would climb up to where they're going to hunt, they would get in their stand, and then they would tether themselves in. Um, and that's good if you get that far. But the problem is people were falling, going up the stand, the ladder, or going the transition from the climbing sticks to the lock-on. So you need to be attached to the tree. So that's when the lifeline came about. So the lifeline wraps around the tree above where you're hunting and goes down to the ground. And so it's the picture on the right. And on that, that line will have a, um, it's a, a knot. It's called a, well, I'm not sure what it's called. I've heard it called a Prusik knot, Prusik knot. It's, it's a knot. I'm just not sure how to pronounce it. It's, it wraps around several times around on the, the main rope. And then there's a carabiner on that and that would hook to your tether. So you would tether that in. And the, how this knot works is when there's no tension on that knot, that knot slides easily up or down the rope. So you can slide that up, that knot up. You can tether your, you know, connect your carabiner to your tether and then slide that up. And then um, if you were to pull down on your, on your tether, um, that knot tightens and grips that rope. So that's how that works. So it slides easy and that's why they use it because it slides up. But um, if you were to fall, it, it will, it will grip that rope and not slide. It, it's only when there's no weight on it will it slide. So that's why they use that knot. Um, so if you attach yourself to that from the ground, then the, the furthest you're going to fall is however the length of your tether is. Um, and if you know, of course, if you keep, you want to keep that knot up above you to, to kind of shorten that distance you fall. So you should only be falling a foot or two. Um, and so that's that's how. Um, people are, are, are saving themselves. The, I don't have the stats here off the top of my head. There was like a three year period. I don't know if it ended last year before something, but they cut the, the incidents, the injury incidents in half in those three years. Cause it's, it's really, it's, it's kind of permeating, permeating the market. Um, people are starting to really use them. You know, even the old time guys, oh, I don't need that. Yeah. Well, you know, the either, you know, stopped hunting or died from falling out of a tree, but you know, the ones who haven't are, are starting to use them. And so the, the injury rates are, are really coming down, which really no one should fall from a tree stand, right? If you're attached to this, the tree from the ground, you, you, you can't fall to the ground. So um, here's just a chart. So the TSSA tree stand safety association is a, um, they kind of, spearhead this safety issue all the tree stand makers are 
um, are, are, are in, involved. And so whenever you buy a tree stand, it's going to have a safety harness with it, right? Because no one um, should not be tethered to the tree. Um, so and here's a little chart showing you um, how fast you're going to be hitting the ground, <laughs> um, depending on how high it is. So it's, 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 you know, that's why people die and, you know, break legs, backs, necks from falling from these heights. Um, um, so, and of course the guy who's tethered only falls a couple feet and he doesn't really fall to the ground. He's just hanging there. So, um, okay. What to do if you fall and you're, 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 you're tethered to the tree and you do fall. So here, here's this little chart here. We can, of course, stay calm. Always have your phone on you. Um, um, if you are being, if you're hanging from your safety harness, um, there is a risk to that. If you hang from that like that long enough, that will kill you. It, it interferes with the blood flow and everything. And there, you, you will eventually die if you can just hang like that. Um, so the, the, the safety harnesses will come with a relief strap. So it's a strap that, um, I use a hunter safety system one and it hooks right behind you and it goes down so you can put your foot through the loop on this look three foot section four foot section of rope whatever you can put your foot in there and put your weight on that foot and so when you when you basically stand on that foot you lift your weight out of the harness onto that foot and that relieves that pressure um around your legs because that's like i said if you stay there long enough i don't know how long it takes but um if you stay there long enough that, that that's not good if you've got your phone, call for help, or really you should you should be able to get back onto where you were. And if you look at the picture here, he had too much slack in that tether. That te he was not tethered high enough, or his tether should have been shortened. He should not have fallen down below like that. Um, you can see where it's he had a tether just you know kind of where he was sitting at his butt height. It should have been up above the height you want to have it. You want to have it so that high enough that you can just sit down. That if it were a little bit higher, then you wouldn't quite be able to sit down. You just lower it so you can sit. Um, and that way, um, if you happen to, like if you're sitting there and you happen to fall asleep and start to fall out, you only, you know, you lean a little bit and that tether catches you. And that's as far as you really want to go. Um, so make sure your equipment's you, you know how it works and and you set it right so if something happens yeah you you, you really won't fall you're going to fall inches um but not not too far and definitely not going to fall to the ground um let me go back i want to i think i mixed the lineman's belt so um the picture here he's he's holding the what's the here the picture says tree belt that's a lineman's belt and that so that would wrap that would hook um, usually hooks on there's a, a little um, loop or something around the hips on the harness um, and that that belt would go from hip to hip around the tree and the good thing about that when you're when you're particularly you're going up those attaching your you're shooting your, your climbing sticks um, you you raise that belt up the tree up higher than you and then you can lean back right and so your weight is is coming on your harness um, and, and the lineman's belt, and that frees up both hands. So you're, you're hanging there, you, so you got your feet and the harness, the lineman's belt holding you up. And so your hands are free to do what you need to do, which is tighten those straps that, that hold the, the climbing sticks. So, so that's how that works. So I'm gonna make sure I cover that. And there's plenty of videos. If you go to the TSSA website or YouTube, you, you can find all kinds of things. Um, safety notes, um, again, you, you know, I didn't want to scare you, but I want you to be safe. Um, your life is worth the little extra effort to wear a harness and use the harness, hook the harness up. Um, you know, it really is. Um, and also understand, so whatever stand you have, particularly if you have a climber, um, understand how it works. Um, cause there's going to be something that goes around the tree and attaches to the stand after it goes around the tree, understand how those connections work. Um, cause those connections, each one of those connections, um, same thing with the harness, 
all the connections, the carabiners, everything, every connection on your harness and your tree stand um, is a life, right? Your life dependent on or keeping you from falling. Um, so make sure you understand how they work, check them and test them. Um, and if you, you, so if you, in any time, you should try to test everything. So if you come up to a stand and you're going to hunt, someone takes you to their, their favorite ladder stand or lock on, and there's a lifeline, all right, you hook into the lifeline, test the lot, test the lifeline, grab the lifeline, yank on it, make sure it, it's, it's going to support your weight, all right? Um, just, just, it's a simple thing when you hook in, test it. Right. When you, when you, if, or if, you know, you have a different one, uh, where you tether yourself to the tree, you know, from your safety harness, test it, give it a yank, make sure, you know, put it on and give it a yank, make sure, make sure it's going to hold you. Um, um, so that's it for this. Um, we're two questions. All right. Thanks, Pat. That was a lot of information and really good stuff, especially about staying safe. Um, over here in the chat box, so it looks like so far we've got one comment that Daniel has a really good handsaw. So <laughs> that's great. Um, does anybody have any questions for Pat? Anything about the different stands or how to set them up or where? Anything like that? Um, I will offer um, anybody, um, you know, that, that can make it to my place um, is, is I'm more than willing to sh to let them try a climber, um, you know, a climber or a lock on. Um, I can they can I can show them how they how they get set up, let them set them up, let them climb. Um, you know, I just I got I got the space in my my yard to do that sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's, I'd be more than willing to, to help somebody out that way. All right. That's great. And we do have a question here. How do you handle trees narrowing as you climb with a climber? Okay. That, that, I, I didn't mention that. So that's, there, there's an art to this. So, you know, particularly the first time up a tree, you know, there's a little guesswork, right? So I'm looking at the tree cause you know, they all vary in how they change. Um, um, you know, some pines are more uniform. Oaks tend to vary more. Um, so, you know, you look up, you know, I look up to where I think I'm going to be, right? You know, and, and I look to see, you know, how narrow it is. And so I want it to fit. So the platform, particularly the bottom platform is, you know, parallel to the ground. And so when you're at when you're down at the bottom of the tree, it's it's wider. So that that stand is going to be kind of too tight, right, for the bottom. So that platform is going to be sticking up up in the front, right. So it's not going to be level. Um, so and it can be tricky if, if there's a big variance in the size of the tree. So that when you start, right, you know, like I said, these oaks, some of the bottom of the oaks are, are fatter, and then they you know, around eight feet or so, then they, they get more uniform, but the bottom is, so when you're starting, it, it's a little tricky because it's tight, right? And when it's tight, then it's a little trickier to loosen up and move up. Um, so yeah, but you have to, you have to, it has to be tighter at the bottom. And then as you go up, that platform will start getting more parallel to the ground and, and that dropping. Um, and if you get it wrong, what happens is you, you, that platform will be slanting down um away from, you know as you know you're sitting it'll be slant, slanting down and that that's really uncomfortable it, it's better to have it back right you'll see some of these stands actually have a raised portion uh where, where you can put your feet you can tip your feet up it's very just very uncomfortable to be sitting with your feet down particularly if you stand in that in that manner um, with with the, then what happens? Your feet slide, start sliding down your boots. It's just a very uncomfortable. Um, so it, it's like I said, it's an art. And when it, whenever I go up a tree, um, if I'm going to hunt that tree again, I always remember how many because uh, mine has is you know those little notches on the cable. 
you know, I remember that's that's a, a four notch tree. So I, I'm, I'm out four notches. Um, and then so if I, you know, go up four and I, and I realize, well, I should have been only out. I should only use three notches <laughs> out. Right. Um, so next time I, I get it right. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons I try, you know, not always, but, you know, I mean, a lot of times, particularly uh, beginning of the season, preseason, when you have time, when I'm scouting. I will try to use my, you know, I'll scout and, and, and I'll think, oh, hi, this, uh, this is a good tree. Um, I'll try to go up that tree. And one of the reasons is to make sure I know what, you know, how many notches on my tree stand, <laughs> right? Because um, when I show up there, you know, 530 in the morning and it's pitch dark, you know, I, I, it's, it's, you know, you got to know, you want to know what, what you're setting your tree at, your tree stand at to, so it's comfortable when you get up there, so. Good question. Very good question. Experience is part of the answer. So, great. And uh, Guy and Judy, did you still have a question or a comment? Um, yeah. Well, I did. I put a question uh, on the chat, but uh, Pat, could you mention about ratchet straps and how often you change and check those on? Especially ladder and lock-ons, please. Yeah, so so on, on the ladder and lock-ons, yeah. So um, I, you know, I bought a couple old ladder stands, simple ladder stands, um, and and you know I don't even, they didn't come with any sort of strap. You know, they had the the two straps. Typically, there's two straps that go come off the back of those, and it wraps around the tree and ties to the ladder, and that is just not efficient to to secure that to the the, the tree. So once you you can put that on, then you can climb up the ladder stand and then you're going to um ratchet those in you know the newer ones will have the ratchets so so i always you know the ratchets have to be in good shape and they're, they're not expensive you can buy these ratchet straps for for you know 20 bucks or something um and so you just you don't want to make sure they're in really good shape um i don't if i'm gonna you know at the end of the season i always take my ratchet straps off because I just don't want them to weather, and I loosen up, you know, the, the tree stands themselves as well. Because um, some people will leave, you know, they can be somewhat permanent. But what happens if you leave them in the same spot on the same tree, particularly ratcheted in, the tree will start, you know, growing around them, or they grow into the tree. Really, the, I mean, the tree, the bark continues to grow out. Um, and one, it'll expand, and it, if you just leave the ratchets there tight it actually will expand and break those ratchets um and either other there's so lock-ons some some people will leave lock-ons because there's some of the lock-ons you can take the fabric portion off and then you just have this metal thing um attached to a tree uh, and it might be a chain you know the, the chain loops around the back um and i've seen i've come across these on on you know a couple you know if, if you hunt old farm property you know they, they've been hunted for a long time and you can all find all kinds of remnants of tree stands um and you know um and some of these you can see where these these metal chains where the trees expanded and it's you know it, either a chain link just broke or you know where the chain hooked into the loop you know on, on the stand bent and just right because the, tree, the trees will continue to grow um and they'll ruin anything you know it doesn't metal anything um that just makes them unsafe so that's why i would if i was going to leave a stand like that i always loosen it up so it's not going to grow into the tree and, I, and I'll, I'll just take the ratchet straps off um so they don't weather and they don't get ruined and then pre-season you know i'll i'll go back up um, tighten up, you know, put the ratchets and snug everything back up. And that way um, the, the tree stands aren't getting destroyed by the growing tree. So. All right. Any more questions? All right. And as Pat mentioned, he's very open to having you all contact him or um, have him help show you how to set up a stand and everything. So you can definitely take advantage of that. 
And um, if there are no more questions, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. So special thanks this evening to New Hill Education and Mentoring Program and all the facilitating partners. Um, watch for a post webinar email with a link for all materials related to this evening's webinar and a registration link for our next webinar in the series, which is June 8th. And the webinar will be on game cameras and our speaker will be Guy Gardner from the New Hill Education and Mentoring Program. If you have further questions or would like more information on outdoor opportunities, please contact the New Hill Education and Mentoring Program at the link or Facebook page provided. Also check out ncwf.org to learn more about the Wildlife Federation and how to join a local chapter. Thanks so much for this evening's presentation, Pat, and thank you to everyone who could join us this evening. So I uh, hope you all have a great evening and uh, hopefully we'll see you on June 8th.